Late last year, I visited the Monan shipyard in the Netherlands and showed you a beautiful 110 foot yacht that they were building. In the months that followed, the vessel was finished, taken out of the yard and launched, sea trialed, and is now available to be viewed by qualified buyers right outside the shipyard. And since she is available to be viewed, I flew over to do exactly that. In this video, we'll be talking about something I have never discussed before in any other yacht walk. Looking at every area of this magnificent vessel, and as we do so, a Monan masterclass of yacht building will unfold. I was going to call the video Monan Magic, but the real magic of Monan is something I'll reserve for the very end. If you do decide to visit the yacht at the Monan facility, most likely your tour on board will start here, in the aft deck. Actually, whether you visit the yacht at Monan or at anchor or in the port, most yacht tours start here. And Monan understand that this is a favored area for dining on board. So they provided a spacious dining table with easily enough space for 10 people to sit around, but at the same time, enough floor space for a group of your guests to stand here. Usually when you enter a yacht for the first time, you'll have the crew probably standing around here with welcoming drinks, hot towels. So it's good that there's also this unit for them to be able to rest a tray on. It starts to get really interesting though, when we look inside. It would be easy for me to talk about the fabrics, textures, and the cozy ambience of the main salon. The interior design, in fact, is the result of wonderful work by Studio Indigo. But I did say that this yacht offers a magical masterclass of yacht building, and I wanted to point out these windows. Now, the frameless fitting of these windows is so perfect that I just had to ask how it's done. I'm glad that I did ask because I discovered that Monan don't order the glass until the superstructure in this area has been filled, fared, and even painted. At that point, they measure the area with laser points to know the exact size of glass that they need to order to a fraction of a millimeter. Moving forward, to port we have a well-proportioned and well-equipped galley. Meal a hot plate and oven, plenty of refrigeration and freezer storage, plenty of work surfaces too, including this prep station. To avoid the area being dark, a large window has been installed overlooking the side deck. Crew can enter from a side door, but there's also a door for them to go from the galley to the crew quarters. We'll be looking at that a little later. First, let's go back to the main salon and head starboard past the day head and up a few steps to the owner's stateroom. Now the addition of those steps elevates this area of the yacht so that the owner can enjoy wonderful views, even when sitting up in bed. The stateroom has a magnificent white Venus marble bathroom, a heated floor, in fact, all of the bathrooms on board have heated floors, even the day head. And just look at the amount of wardrobe space available too. What about your guests though? One of the things I really like about Mona is that they believe that simplicity of a layout is best. And I wholeheartedly agree with them. At the bottom of the steps leading down to the cabins, we find good storage areas for linens, towels, cleaning material, and two twin staterooms with ensuite bathrooms benefiting from that same gorgeous Venus white marble. And if you're watching this video but looking for a yacht with different cabin configurations, you'll be interested to hear that the twin beds can be brought together to form one double. After we have two double staterooms, surprisingly large to be quite honest. 
are not only benefiting again from the white marble bathrooms, but also from the same brass fittings of the other staterooms that give a gentle nod to nautical styling in the context of an otherwise very fresh and modern decor. I particularly liked these tuck-away reading lights, much like the layout below deck, simple, but sophisticated and effective. To show you the sun deck, I could take you up those stairs, but I prefer to take you outside and along the side deck. There's a good reason for this. I can't count how many times we've been filming a yacht video with the classic scene of me walking along the side deck and all of a sudden we've had to stop because above my head there's an engine room extractor grill making so much noise that it ruins the presentation. I have to say it can be quite annoying for the guests too. Now some of those grills are actually very nicely fitted. Some of them are a little bit grim and rusty but all of them make a lot of noise. So, Monan have incorporated the engine room extraction system into the superstructure above the side decks instead of blowing down onto them. It looks so much more elegant. But it's also less noisy simply because they could have a larger aperture by doing it that way. Monan have been working for decades with designer René van der Velden and he clearly understands their need for elegance with practicality. Well, from the side deck, we can access the sun deck from these beautiful steps. And I have to say that the sun deck of the Monan 110 is one of the strongest features. It really is very generously proportioned. Many yacht builders will fit a crane to the deck itself, which does take up a fair amount of floor space. But Monan have fitted it into the superstructure leaving more space available for a tender of up to five meters if you fit it transversely or seven and a half meters if you position it longitudinally. On that subject, if your tender of choice is too heavy for the crane, then Monan will be happy to upgrade it to a two-ton crane. When the tender is launched, the deck can be used for sunbeds. Close to a stylish bar complete with a hot plate, ice maker, and a large fridge. The shaded seating area is aft of the pilot house with an extendable sun awning to offer even more shade if necessary. At the moment the seating area is set up with two separate tables but a leaf is available to make it one large table. The outside area doesn't end here though. If we move forward of the pilot house we find a large sunbathing area. And down a few steps to the bow is another private seating area that can also be covered by a sun awning. Back inside though, and to the pilot house. I said before that Monan believe that simplicity and functionality is best. The pilot house is a great example of that. Spacious enough for clients to enjoy watching from this vantage point, but with all of the modern equipment that any captain and crew could wish for. And talking of crew, we can descend the stairwell, past the galley, and to the crew quarters. This is, again, a surprisingly spacious area for this size of a yacht, a subject we'll be coming to very soon. A laundry is positioned off from the mess with two washers and two dryers, and the captain's cabin is big enough for him to even have his own desk. Respect for crew spaces is becoming increasingly important and Monan have made sure that this surprisingly spacious accommodation and a workstation is also available in the two forward crew cabins. Now the subject of space on board the yacht is an interesting one and it relates a great deal to the price of the yacht. Something I have never been allowed to state in any other walkthrough video from a shipyard so, what is the price of the brand new Monan 110? 17 million euro plus VAT if applicable. There, I've said it. Usually yacht builders of vessels as big as this and bigger are very reticent to talk publicly about the price. And there is a good reason for that. With 
global price increase is happening at an alarming scale. They don't want to say one price one day and then three months later they have to put it up. Commercial director of Monan, Victor Caminada, said to me this is a pre-war yacht. What he meant by that was that most of the components were purchased before those alarming global price increases occurred. Monan could easily have taken advantage of that, using the increases as an excuse to increase the asking price of this yacht. But that's not the Monan way. 17 million euro is an honest price, set by a company honest enough to allow me to state it publicly. And on the subject of price, Victor also told me that the official result of the yacht's gross tonnage calculations has just been received. As you probably know, gross tonnage is an expression of the volume of a yacht. How much yacht are you really getting for your money? Most 110-foot production yachts that you see in marinas will have a gross tonnage of around 200, whilst the Mona 110 is just under 300. 279 to be exact. Is this the Mona magic I was referring to earlier? Well, no. It's more like Mona mathematics. You see, most production yachts that you see of this size will have what's called a planing hull. That means that it will have big engines and a deep V hull to achieve a greater speed. The problem with a deep V hull is that naturally you have less volume inside and almost certainly it will be built from fiberglass. So when considering where your 17 million euro is going, you really have a choice between speed and fiberglass or volume of a displacement yacht and steel. In the case of the Mona 110, eight millimeter thick steel at the bow. So it's simple, speed or space, fiberglass or steel. To diminish the reasoning on price to this though is really oversimplifying it. And nowhere is that better illustrated than in the engine room. The expression Dutch quality in the yachting industry is synonymous with saying, the best in the world. Well, Monan quite literally are those Dutch builders, the best of the best. They are so confident in their build quality that they offer a two year warranty on the entire yacht, from the mast to the keel. Just look at the Lazarette. They haven't tried to cram a beach club in here as a cheap marketing exercise, they said, we would rather have a lazarette that is the best in its class over a beach club that's the smallest and the worst. Victor showed me the steering gear that was easily accessible from this area and pointed out that this was far stronger and more robust than other yachts in the size range. A real ship building approach. But I noticed the hardware on this hatch. I'm sure some yacht captains will be watching this video and will be aware of the problem of some yards skimping on money by fitting pistons that just aren't man enough for the job. Well, just look at this for a piece of quality, robust hardware. You want to know where your money's being spent? This is one of a thousand examples on board. It continues in the engine room, so well laid out. There are technical features that I sometimes see on yachts but can't really show you because they're difficult to film. But here are supremely filmable because they're so accessible. The Alpha Laval fuel polishing plant is one example, as is the Hammond waste treatment system. Both of which, by the way, are usually costly optional extras, but come along with this yacht. Something that's less visible because it's not located in the engine room is an HVAC system that brings in 100 cubic meters of fresh air, dehumidifies it, cools it, and distributes it throughout the yacht every hour. The difference this makes to comfort on board is significant. 
The engines are Caterpillar C18s, delivering 600 horsepower each. But it should be noted that they are A rated. That means that they can be run at full speed, continuously, day and night. The generators are of 55 kilowatts each, and the hotel load of the entire vessel can be run on one single generator so that you can have the ultimate in redundancy. The top speed of the Monon 110 is 13 knots, and at nine knots, you have a three and a half thousand nautical mile range, transatlantic range. She consumes as little as 60 liters of fuel an hour with both engines and the generator running. It's remarkable. You may think that it would be pretty noisy to run the yacht day and night, and with some yachts that would be true. Not with the Monon. The subject of silence on a yacht is of course especially important when we talk about sleeping. If you can hear the noise of the generator while you're trying to sleep, it really can be quite annoying. Previously in videos, you really just had to take my word for it when I talked to you about decibel levels. Today, that changes because I have a decibel reader and it's a great decibel reader. It tells me that 20 decibels is the threshold of hearing. 30 is the noise of a quiet home. 40 decibels is a gentle whisper. Now, Victor was very keen to show that the honesty of Monon goes beyond their pricing and also onto the noise levels on board. In fact, anyway, the decibel levels are in the contract. So, take it away, Victor. Well, that was surprising. I asked Davida to go down into the engine room to film Victor turn the generator on, while Ricky stayed here to film the decibel meter. We waited for what seemed like forever, and then in the end, Victor called me and said, well, have you finished? They turned the generator on, and it had been running. We did not hear a thing. There was a split second when I saw it jump to 37 decibels, which is when I think they turned the generator on. But apart from that, as you saw, it was low 30s the whole time. Now that opens up possibilities in yachting on a yacht like this, which are not to be underestimated. Sleeping at anchor in this yacht will be completely peaceful. If you want to be able to go through the night from, let's say, Montenegro, sleep all night, wake up in the Greek islands, even with the engines running, with this kind of soundproofing, you can do that. And you can really enjoy next level yachting. Magic? No. Just competent engineering and excellent build practices. Look here, for example, where the chiller units are installed. Not only is each chiller mounted on rubber for noise and vibration reduction, but the entire framework is attached to the keel alone. Not the deck, just the keel, with the water acting as a natural, powerful sound and vibration suppressant. As often happens, the greatest inspiration comes from the least expected source. Yesterday I was on board taking notes and I walked into the master stateroom and there was a lady there cleaning the insides, getting everything looking pristine and she turned around and looked at me and said, isn't this a beautiful boat? Then I noticed, and around the yacht, there was other cleaning staff, all of them singing and laughing, but above all, commenting on oh, what a beautiful yacht this really is. Now, when you get everybody in a company, from the owner of the company to the directors, the engineering department, the workers on the shop floor, the cleaning staff, all feeling pride in the product, when you get that, that is the real Monon magic.